Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today, as you can see by what we've got in front of the camera here, we're going to be taking a look at that MacBook Pro that I recently acquired along with those Dell laptops. And speaking of those Dell laptops, yeah, you can actually see I am still in the process of getting all of the drivers installed on both of them. I actually just finished shooting this video, which if you haven't seen it, go ahead and actually check it out up in the cards. It was basically, you know, me just going through and actually formatting these two machines, getting everything set up. But today's video is going to be specifically focused on this MacBook Pro. This laptop is from 2011. And when I first got it, which you may have seen from that um, unboxing video, there is a little bit of an issue going on. I don't know if you can hear that that well, I'll go ahead and bring it closer to the microphone, but there is some rattling going on. And it was uh, pointed out to me by somebody that that may actually just be the SATA cable rattling around because the hard drive has been removed. And now that I think about it, that may actually be exactly what this is because I believe that the hard drive goes right over here and it kind of sounds to me now that you know it was pointed out to me, it sounds like it's you know some sort of cable. So we're going to actually be opening this thing up. I said in that first video that I didn't want to actually turn this thing on. The people who gave this to me told me specifically that it doesn't work. So I thought it had something to, uh, to do with, you know, that whole loose part. But it may be that the they just, you know, took their hard drive out because they moved it to another computer. But we're going to go ahead and actually remove uh, the screws here. And oh, by the way, I, I am using my new um, iFixit uh, Manta driver kit. This thing is insane. This is like over a hundred driver bits in here. If you do any sort of like electronic repair on a regular basis, this is a kit that I would recommend getting because this is just insane. And I, I got to give props to Apple because on their 2011 laptop here, they used regular Phillips screws uh, which on the exterior, which is amazing. Usually they don't do that. At least they don't do that now. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and actually take off the panel here. It's actually, oh crap. Well, that's exactly what that is. That's exactly what that rattling was. Check that out. That dude was on point in uh, the comments. That is totally just the fact that there's no hard drive. So that may be all that's wrong with this because the people said that it doesn't turn on and it doesn't work. That literally might be the only issue. There's no hard drive, so there's nothing for it to boot from. It looks like we've got um, four gigs of RAM here. Well, now that I know it isn't anything super severe, let me go ahead and actually, um, um, I mean, I'm not going to screw it back in because I'm probably just going to take it off again. Let's go ahead and actually turn this thing on and see if it actually will boot up. So we'll go ahead and turn it on here. Oh, and check, oh, check that out. Oh wow, the thing's totally turning on. So yes, there was a charge in uh, the battery that you know we knew from the last video. This thing actually works. So I guess literally the only issue is is there's no hard drive because it's, it's probably going to come up with a you know a blinking question mark. Yeah, check that out. So that is actually very exciting because I actually know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and actually just power this off here. Um, I have, you guys may or may not know, if you're a, a long-time viewer of mine, you may know that I have a mid-2009 um, MacBook Pro, and I've had that computer for years. I actually, I think I got that from the same people, if I'm not mistaken, but they just gave this one to me because it wasn't working, or I, I guess they thought it wasn't working. Um, this one I actually purchased from them because it did work, and... Um, let me just reach in my stuff here. But yeah, this mid-2009 MacBook Pro I've had for a while, and I was debating on, uh, back when I purchased my Acer laptop, I bought that on Black Friday 2016. That is my current laptop. Um, but I was debating of, you know, trying to upgrade this one or just get a whole new laptop. I ultimately ended up just purchasing a new laptop because this thing is a mid-2009, it is super old. But, you know what this one does have? It's got a hard drive, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm literally just going to take the hard drive out of this one and uh, put it into the mid-2011 or whatever, you know, 2011 that, that this is. And uh, I think that the 2011 is going to be my, I mean, it's not going to be my main laptop, but this is actually, this actually could definitely be my main Mac um, when I decide to use a Mac, that is. So let me just go ahead and... Uh, take the screws out of this one. I got to go ahead and actually keep these screws separate now because I've got two 
um, different screw sets on the desk here. The mid-2009 MacBook Pro, by the way, is a 13-inch, and that 2011 is a 15-inch. I was I almost at 11-inch. I'm like, no way, that's not, definitely not the case. Uh, the, the 2011 is a 15-inch. I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited, guys, because this is actually going to be super cool. Um, let me go ahead and just, I think this is pretty simple to do. You just go ahead and remove this here. And get the two screws out for the drive caddy. Okay, we'll go ahead and pull that up. And I'm not, I'm not using like any, you know, iFixit guide or anything because I pretty much know how this works. Um, we'll go ahead and just, so there we go. There's our hard drive. We'll go ahead and just set that aside. And oh my gosh, all the screws have stuck to the, to the uh, screwdriver here. So we'll go ahead and set the 2009, the mid-2009 aside. And we will go ahead and take the cover off the mid-2011. Oh, the hard drive is down here now. And i um, got so much stuff on my desk. Let me just think for a moment here. We got to remove the bracket here. We'll go ahead and plug in our hard drive. Just like that. So this is a Toshiba... Um, I want to say, well, let's see, where is it at? Yeah, this is a, a 160 gig Toshiba drive. It is a Apple branded drive. So this is a, a generic Apple drive for those people who are concerned that I'm not using generic Apple hardware. Oh no, whatever will we do if we don't use generic Apple hardware? Obviously I'm just joking because who cares? Apple charges way too much for their RAM uh, upgrades now that it's soldered to the motherboard on some of the machines. Um, all right, so there we go. We'll go ahead and flip this back over. So we'll go ahead and turn this machine on here. I believe this drive actually has High Sierra on it because I did use a uh, Mac OS uh, Sierra or High Sierra patcher tool, which I believe I made a uh, video on back a while ago to actually get High Sierra on my unsupported 2009 Mac. So let's see if this thing decides to boot up here. It may still not boot up and if that's the case it sounds like there's going to be something else wrong with it which hopefully is not the case check that out apple logo oh my gosh this is so cool so i think i yeah i just literally upgraded my mac setup that is insane so that's all it was there was no hard drive so i guess they took out the hard drive and they didn't remember or they took it somewhere and they had their data like recovered i really have no idea but that is awesome so I'm just going to go ahead and actually uh, let this thing boot up. This thing is definitely getting an SSD. I'm absolutely going to be ordering a SSD. Probably going to go ahead and do a little video on that. Why not? Um, because this thing is this thing can be so much faster with a SSD. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and order probably that same uh, $20 SSD that if I can still find it for like 20 bucks. But that uh, Kingston 120 gig SSD that I put in the $20 i7 PC probably going to order another one of those and I'm probably going to do a fresh install of Mac OS 10 and it is actually restarting now for some reason the battery is also critically low that may have something to do with why it just restarted so yeah this thing is actually just rebooted multiple times I think it's stuck in like a boot loop so I'm actually just going to go ahead since I know that there's not really anything important on this hard drive we're just going to boot up and press command R to uh, boot into OS 10 recovery and just do a clean install onto this hard drive. All right, so we've been stuck at this screen for a while as well, so I think I'm just going to boot into internet recovery. That's our last option. And that is simply a uh, command option R. So go ahead and hold, the, hold that as we turn on the computer. And uh, we should automatically boot into uh, internet recovery mode there we go okay all right welcome back guys well i might have spoken too soon about this whole laptop being able to be in working order and everything because as it turns out there is a little bit more of a severe issue with it and this was also actually pointed out to me on the original video as well as apparently these 2011 macbook pros are notorious for having a issue with the onboard graphics chip. Apparently this graphics chip fails and Apple even offered a replacement program for uh, the logic board and 
this machine right here has essentially fallen victim to that because and i'm not sure as of right now what footage that i'm going to include but i tried doing multiple things to get this machine to boot i tried to first boot it up normally into the mac os high sierra partition that i had installed on the hard drive that and you know that didn't work it just got to a gray screen and it automatically restarted i tried the same thing while booting into recovery mode and internet recovery both of which basically did the same thing although recovery mode went to a blue screen and then it also just you know got into a endless boot loop then i decided to take the hard drive out of this computer put it back into the mid-2009, and sure enough, the hard drive booted up successfully. So that pretty much confirmed for me that, well, this machine does have a more severe issue. And when I looked online and kind of did some more research about this, apparently these uh, symptoms that this computer is experiencing is a sign. And I even tried booting into the El Capitan partition. I tried uh, putting Mac OS onto a USB drive, putting a installer onto here and trying to boot from that. The only thing that this machine basically can do is boot into single user mode. And let me kind of show you what that looks like here. So we're going to turn on, we're going to hold down Command S, and that will actually boot us into OS X's single user mode. This is the only way we can actually successfully boot up this machine. And by using single user mode here, there is a way to get the computer to boot into the full fledged OS X operating system, but it basically loads the operating system in a very low graphics mode state to where it's not really going to be pleasant to use um, in any other circumstance aside from you know copying files that's really all you would probably want to do that for is if you had uh, some very sensitive documents on this computer and you didn't have another machine to plug the hard drive into and you had to get this data off like immediately, there is a way to kind of get around this, but it is not a permanent solution for this problem. This is a hardware issue, and the only way to fix it is to replace the logic board or at least the graphics chip on the logic board, but that may not solve the entire problem because if I go out and buy a new logic board, bring it home and install it into this computer, the same issue could happen months or maybe even years down the road. And because of that, I don't really know if it's really worth fixing, to be honest. I mean, especially if the part is very expensive. I don't know how much that a logic board for this computer costs. I haven't even looked it up yet. But uh, if it's, you know, a couple hundred dollars, it's probably not really going to be worth it. So yeah, I'm probably not really going to do much else with this machine at the moment. I'll probably keep it around for some spare parts, maybe in the near future if I can find a part cheap enough on eBay I might just say hey why not let's go ahead and actually try to fix this thing and uh, get it up and running but for now that is essentially going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video I hope that you guys enjoyed this one if you did definitely be sure to give this video a like get subscribed down below and turn on channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos on this channel which I do every single week and be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this video, on this whole uh, diagnostic process that we did. Be sure to let me know if you guys have a MacBook from around this time that has the same issue, uh, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.